It's my pleasure to welcome you to Answers from Scripture. Whether you're just being introduced to the Bible for the first time or you've been studying it for a lifetime, I'm confident that you'll benefit from Brother Mark's passionate explanations for the Word of God. Hey, welcome back, friends and neighbors. I'm your host, Brother Mark. This is Answers from Scripture, and today's question came from an unusual place. It came right out of prison. I, from time to time, correspond with people who were once serving God full-time, and they're now incarcerated. And one brother asked a question in an email that he sent to me this week. He said, why didn't the Bible keep me from sin? Why didn't the Bible keep me from sin. There's an old axiomatic expression. Either sin will keep you from this book or this book will keep you from sin. And he said in that email, I was reading the Bible every day. Why didn't, and this is somebody, he's not doubting God. He loves God still. He's trying to serve him, even though he's almost certain to spend the rest of his days behind bars. He hasn't given up on God, but he just asked the very honest question, why didn't the Bible keep me from sin? I've seen some of the people that backslid in the worst, backslid straight from Bible college. I know people like this man who was reading, who were reading their Bible day after day after day, and yet went into sin. Why didn't the Bible keep me from sin? Turn to Psalm 119 with me. We're going to start with verse 9, because I want to show from whence we get that expression. Either sin will keep you from this book, or this book will keep you from sin. Here are two verses in the Bible that explain that a little bit. In verse 9, Psalm 119, the longest psalm, it's all about the Word of God. And in verse 9 it says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Notice what it doesn't say. By reading devotions every day. Now, it's important to read. Thou shalt read there in all the days of thy life. It's important to read. It's important to have the Christian discipline of reading God's word. But take heed thereto, says, wake up, pay attention. And that's a whole different ballgame between those who just read God's word and those who take heed, who pay attention, who follow its precepts. Look, if you will, at verse 11, maybe an even more famous verse on the same topic. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. He was saying, God, I'm trusting your word to keep me from sin. But notice what he didn't say. I've read a chapter every day that I might not sin against thee. Or I've read an hour every day that I might not sin against thee. Or I've read two hours every day that I might not sin against thee. He said, I, I, wake, I wake up, I pay attention, I take heed, I hide it in my heart. I want my thoughts to be more like God's thoughts. I want my ways to be more like God's ways. I want my heart to crave the truth of Scripture, and I want to learn to live it. I want to apply God's paths to my life. There's a whole different story between some, someone, between someone who reads therein all the days of his life and someone who takes heed and hides it in his word. We think of Psalm 1. Blessed is a man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. It's not just he reads the Bible. He did his devotions for the day. He crosses that off his to-do list and goes on to the next thing on his to-do list. But his delight is in it. He loves God's word. He's trying to place God's word in his heart. He thinks about it day and night. He meditates therein day and night. God's words to Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That means you're talking about it all the time. You never stop talking about it. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That means you never stop thinking about it. That thou mayest observe to do whatsoever is written therein. That means you never stop acting upon it. You're talking about it. You're thinking about it. You're acting upon it. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good success. These promises of success, the promise in Psalm 1 
that you'll be fruitful, and your leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever you doeth shall prosper. That promise isn't just for the person who says, I read my Bible every day. It's for the person who hid God's word in his heart, who thought about it day and night, and delighted in God's word. I can't wait to find out what God wants to say to me today so that I can improve my life and be a little bit more like he is. I want to change from Bible reading to prayer just to give you an analogy, to show you something that's similar. Jesus talked about the way the heathen pray. And he talked about their, their vain repetitions. And then he said this, they think they're going to be heard for their much speaking. Because they pray so much and they pray so long and they take a little prayer that was written out for them and they pray it again and 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 they repeat themselves over and over and over again and then they think, now surely God has to bless me because look at all the time I spend in prayer. Now think with me for a minute. Is it bad to spend long times in prayer? No. In the garden, Jesus spent three hours. Other times he spent all night. But is it bad to repeat yourself in prayer? No, you look for those three hours in the garden, he prayed the same prayer over and over and over again. It was much speaking, and it was much repetition, but it was anything but vain repetition. Vain means just empty, just going through the motions. Jesus was crying out to the Father. He was sweating sweat drops of blood. It's an earnest, effectual prayer of a righteous man that availeth much. Not an empty, vain prayer. So you have two people praying, and they both think, I'm going to get God's blessings because I prayed. I prayed one hour, and the other man prayed one hour. But the difference is, was it vain prayer? Was it tradition? Was it checking it off the list? Was it trying to impress God a man that you pray? Or was it sincere from your heart? Well, the same thing goes with Bible reading. This young man was, I was, I was reading my Bible every day. But was it vain Bible reading? Be honest. There are days you read a chapter in the Bible, you get up from where you read, and you don't remember one single word. You're, in fact, the next day, if you didn't write down what you read, you read the chapter again, you can't remember, was that the chapter you read yesterday? Or is this the chapter you're supposed to read today? It's, yes, you're reading your Bible. Okay, that's good. That's one of the commandments. Read there in all the days of thy life. But are you meditating in it? Are you thinking about it day and night? Are you delighting in it? Are you hiding its words in your heart? Are you trying to act upon it? That person, the Bible, will keep him from sin. The person that's just checking off chapters on a list to impress God. You don't, you don't play God like that. You don't manipulate God. Here you are you intentionally in sin and fornication, at least in your heart, if not in your everyday action, and then think, but I read three chapters. Surely that'll appease him for another day. No, it's a reading that's from the heart and to the heart, and you think about it and you dwell on it, and you delight in it, and you try to apply it to your life. That type of time in God's Word can keep you from sin. And I hope you've experienced that and will continue to do so. God bless you. You have a great day. Thanks so much for listening. If you have a question you'd like to have answered, mention it in the comments field below or visit us at www.answersfromscripture.online.